Netanyahu's dilemma, dead end, and Al Sayyid's speech, dotting I's and crossing T's, Nasir Qandil. Al Bina newspaper, July 19, 2024. Benjamin Netanyahu is capable of eluding his supporters and some of the fools in Arab and Western public opinion that he is going to Washington to transform the war equation, knowing fully that his problem is not in Washington, from whom he effortlessly receives what he wants in terms of finance, arms, and protection from accountability for war crimes. Regardless of a Democrat or Republican win in the elections, what America has been offering to the occupation will remain unchanged, but Netanyahu will not get more than what is being offered. Whether Democratic or Republican, America will not have its soldiers engage in a war avoided by both Barack Obama and Donald Trump. With a worthwhile reminder to those who forgot that Trump was president when Aramco was attacked in 2019 and when the American giant surveillance drone was downed by an Iranian missile. Netanyahu holds on to persevering in the war basically because he knows that regardless of the responsiveness to the Palestinian cause by global and especially Western public opinion, what the entity is receiving in funds, arms, and protection will continue. He proceeds with his war and is able to turn his back also because of his majority in the Knesset, which protects his government from falling, and as long as the army's complaints, cries, and moaning does not turn into disobedience of his orders, and as long as the military leadership involved like him in bearing responsibility for what occurred on October 7, fears accountability and lacks the courage of confrontation, and has found that the optimal insurance policy is obeying the government and claiming that it only executes the government's orders and has no part in decision making. Even though comfortable with this triad of American support, Knesset majority, and the army's obedience, Netanyahu realizes that he has lost the propulsion force with which he started the war, that the losses incurred are irreparable, that Western public opinion has already changed and continues to escalate, and that the entity and its military are hounded by intensifying infamy. In parallel, the 94% in support of the war evaporated and has been replaced by 27% against and 72% in support of ending the war. The army which started combat with the highest feelings of empowerment and readiness for war has become an exhausted, disjointed, dispirited, demoralized army, lacking in manpower, equipment, and ammunition, with no means of regaining any of the losses to its power sources from October 7, and in fact, no way of limiting a continuous increase in losses. Netanyahu knows that his comfort about American support cannot be superimposed on the two elements of domestic cohesion and commitment by the military to continue in its combat performance. The impact of the army's cries and moaning is increasing on public opinion and reaching the ears of Knesset members and rabbis, causing a widening in the circle of dissent, and Netanyahu cannot guarantee that the moment will not come when the military high command says enough that the war has become a source of threat to the entity's security, its continued existence, and its sources of power, and that the army will not allow pushing the entity to the brink of collapse. He also cannot guarantee the moment when 10 Knesset members will refuse the government a vote of confidence if the war end is not declared. Netanyahu is cognizant that he has reached a dead end, that there is no formula to change course, and with no strategy to end the war, he is doing nothing but buying time. His visit to Washington and speech before the Congress and playing with cards in the U.S. presidential elections will make no changes to factors of erosion in the sources of power of the entity's army and war. And because he seeks to buy time, he has sold two lies to the entity's army and public opinion. The first is the so-called third phase of the war in Gaza, and that repositioning the army outside heavily civilian populated areas and reduced friction with al muqawma forces will lead to de-escalation in Gaza and therefore in North Palestine. The second 
is the lie that this will lead to opportunities for a larger scale agreement and that an agreement with Gaza will lead to the implementation of an already reached agreement on Lebanon's front. As Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah spoke in Ashura, he stated that the third phase does not signify to al muqawama and what concerns al muqawama is an end of the war through an agreement it accepts. He added that there is no truth in what is rumored about a ready-made agreement for Lebanon's front and that the nature of supposed arrangements on Lebanon's front will be decided by conditions on the front at that time. Accordingly, a Sayyid's words crippled the effects of the buying time game sought by Netanyahu, bringing back the dilemma to its first square and affirmed that negotiations with al-Muqawama in Gaza is the path to reaching an agreement.